Welcome to Holy Fuck. Holy Fuck. Holy Fuck. Two gals on the prowl for enlightenment, sex, and all things holy. Holy Fuck. Each week, beauty alchemist and transformational coach and speaker, Catherine McClellan, and spiritual healer and life coach, Krista Kim, discuss navigating spiritual consciousness in a real human body. Stumbling through dating, relationships, and everyday life, all while maintaining a fucking sense of humor. Hey, Krista. Hey, Catherine. What's happening? (laughs) So many things are happening. One of the things that we're going to talk about today is... Jealousy. Jealousy. We're going to talk about the green... What do they call it? The green... Monster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Heart chakra's green, green monster, jealousy. Anyway, yes, it has something to do with love because we're not jealous at all when we're not in love with someone. Um, and it's curious whether that's coming from our instincts or from our true loving. My guess is we're going to find out there's some instinctual <laughs> behavior behind jealousy that we're going to get to explore. So, Well, let's talk about your relationship yeah, and not one yeah. of my relationships. Yeah, like- it's good. It's about time, right? <laughs> we've been letting Krista like hang out her flag for a while. So, Well, we've been letting you just bask in the beauty have, of new relationship. I've been and- basking in the milieu of my new relationship. <laughs> it's lovely. And, you know, it's funny because we... I think probably everybody says, yeah, 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 I want to be in a committed relationship and I want to be in love. And um, what we're noticing is it's a hell of a lot of work. Um, (laughs) Even in the best relationships. Absolutely. And you know, one of the funniest things I realized the other day, you know how we always say like you can tell it's a good relationship if you always feel good and like you're feeling good. Have you ever noticed like your regular life, you don't always feel good? Like, so why do Shit we put that up. on? So why do we put that pressure on our relationship? It really made me laugh the other day. I was like, wait a minute. If if I can wake up in the morning grumpy with no relationship, <laughs> but then I wake up in the morning grumpy with a relationship, and then and it's, it's his their fault. fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's just way more convenient. It's way more convenient, <laughs> and it's actually harder to see that it's mine. Mm. So it's like a little smoke screen, right? Like if I wake up grumpy and somebody rolls over and smiles at me wrong, or <laughs> or but isn't that smile. the lesson of projection? Of a, it's it, it's always is. yours, anyways. It, it just we get to forget that a little bit the minute we bring in a partner. It absolutely. And that's why it made me laugh because I had never thought about, oh, it's not like when I'm single, all you single friends out there, every day I wake up and all is well in my world. And all I'm looking to do is bring in a partner who's going to be all is well and it's going to be all is well forever. Well, now this is just really upsetting to me to figure (laughs) out that you might have a problem in your relationship because I'm looking at the two of you like, God, if you guys can't make it work and be perfect, then how is anybody else going to be able to do it? (laughs) Yeah, well, I appreciate you saying that because we think it's perfect and we have struggled even with that word. We could talk Mm. about that sometime, but what's really perfect is that I perfect relationship is one where you grow. And that doesn't mean that it should be constant work. I've done that once. That was not fun. (laughs) No, we're not doing that. But the opportunity to grow is looking at yourself. And we all have opportunities to grow, especially when we're single. We often pretend like we don't or we anesthetize ourselves by going out drinking with our friends or doing something or distract hmm. ourselves by, I've never done that. Is that my problem this morning? Is I that anesthetized problem this myself morning? last night. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, so we don't necessarily notice all those opportunities for growth, but the minute you're staring at someone else, they come fast and furious and it looks like it's them. So So what do you think is your opportunity to grow these days in this new relationship? Well, this one is a, this is a good one for me. Mm, Um, I've got, I just want to say into the world, I am working on partnership. I love partnership. And the first thing I had to realize, which is based in this conversation is I actually have to choose two things. What is that? First, I had to choose partnership Mm. and I had to choose him. So I think we get those two things confused. And so sometimes, like say you meet a guy and you really like him, they start crossing over and you're like, or maybe the guy says, well, you're really cool, but I'm not really wanting a relationship right now. 
it's really hard to feel really cool when a guy you're dating doesn't want a relationship in those of our books who relationship is the thing we want. Right. So I realized that it's so tricky because you actually have to choose to want a relationship and then you have to choose the person. And then they have and to they choose have to, to want to be in a relationship exa- and choose you back. Exactly. And so that's been one of the things that we've been talking about, like commitment. Are you really here? You know, um, are you here for today or are you here for six months or are you here for – and it gets tricky because it's not always easy to answer. Some days I'm here for today. Some days I'm here for the <laughs> for the rest of my life and I want to love you forever, you know. And so, what are some things that trigger you into – doubting that or ah that's a great question you know i think krista one of the things that triggers me into doubting it is how vulnerable i am in relationship and i've been vulnerable before and it's been super scary and it's had some not so pretty results yes and i refuse to think that i wasn't the perpetrator of all of those experiences <laughs> i absolutely was and they were really hard. And the way I bring in lessons, as we, you probably know from this point, is you know we bring in lessons harder and harder. We don't bring them in at the same level each time. So it's been pretty intense for me. Or lesser and lesser if if you're closer to healing it. Yes. So we intensify yes, if I'm paying the experience. attention. <laughs> right. <laughs> so if you haven't Good learned point. the lesson, the experience keeps intensifying as you go along. And then once you start going, oh, I'm experiencing that again, and you start doing your healing work, then it will start decreasing. So the biggest one I work with, mm-hmm. you think the biggest, anyway, the one we're going to really look at today, because I think it's the biggest, is jealousy. And I really, so in my life with Mr. Delicious, he's a dancer and he loves to dance and Mm -hmm. he dances with lots of beautiful (laughs) women. And in the way that we dance in a place where people just dance and do whatever they want to music and there's a lot of uh, something called, it's really free form, ecstatic dance is another word for it. And it also has a thing called, um, Oh, I just lost the word. But when there oh, contact improv. So there's mm-hmm. a lot of contact in this dance. So you're not you're not like dancing like, you know, doing the white man <laughs> overbite thing or whatever. You're actually touching people when you're dancing with them. I don't know anybody else out there <laughs> loves to see their man touching other women and lying on the floor with them. And it's just a really interesting experience. So apparently this is a button pusher. <laughs> Like even I'm I can I just have to say like when you're describing the scenario my heart is like tight and I'm getting anxious just hearing you describe right? that situation because like I would like to think that I'm a pretty open person and like um, sure of myself that type of thing and I can tell you right now that I, if not that I'm with Golden Eyes anymore, but if in that relationship we had been in that situation, I would have lost my fucking mind watching that happen. I would, I would have been in tears. I would have struck. I couldn't do it. Uh, I yeah, could it's, not do it, it. It was. It's hard work for me. It's been hard work from the beginning because he dances frequently, and it's always my choice if I want to go. But and do he- other women there have that same feeling? Toward their man, like, is this just us because that's our material? Or do you think everyone's there kind of working their process in that way? Well, I think it might be how long you've been in the community, how long you've been in relationship, Mm -hmm. how many people you have in common that are friends. So for me, I'm mostly on the outside. Oh. I do have some friends in the group, so thank God. <laughs> yeah, but you haven't been there as long as right. like, the other people. Right. And okay. I, I do – I have done my own dancing, so I'm really familiar with how all this dancing goes and that people dance together. I'm just not familiar with doing it with the man who's my man, man, my man, like – Back the fuck off. You and know? can I clarify something? Yeah. When we're talking about dancing and touching, like how are people touching each other? Just because so, I need to decide right now whether this is some type of event I would ever show up to. It's really fun. <laughs> it's a really fun kind of dance. And it's called contact improv. It's an actual kind of dance. Mm-hmm. It's got like a real thing and people learn how to do it. And what you do is you use each other's bodies and the weight of each other's bodies. And so Men dance with men, Mm -hmm. women dance with women, and men and women dance together. Right. 
for me, I'm good with the men and the men and the women and the women. <laughs> and it's just when my love decides, which he frequently does, and it's very sensuous. I mean, it's hot in the room. It's dark in the room. There's okay, but let me be more clear. Like, are you pushing your parts up against people? Well, or not, is it it's like- not sexual at all. So okay, you, that's you, I think that the the guidelines are no hands and no sexual organs. So so you'll push your shoulder up against somebody or you can even push your butt up against somebody, but it's actually not sexual. So they're not taking their hands and like rubbing your body? No, it's not. It's not like, like it's more kind of leaning into each other mm-hmm. rather than, I mean, if I saw him like running his <laughs> hands down someone's arms and looking in her eyes, I'd be across that room like flat. Because that's kind of, I guess, what I was envisioning when you were talking about it. I was like, and when I got like really hot inside my body, I was thinking of like, if I was there with like my love and they were like taking their hands down someone's body, I would, I just couldn't do it. It's, it's so it's not that extreme. Okay, so thank good you to for clarify. us all knowing <laughs> that. Cause you, pe- now there's a whole group of our listeners who are like, are Googling Where? contact downs. Yeah. <laughs> contact improv. What is it? And it can feel really out there. It's not, it's not, it, it's almost like, um, partner yoga in mm-hmm. some ways where you're touching each other, but there's a boundary. You're not, and people get thrown out if there's an energy that women feel. Even Predatory if the man's, of some sort. Right. Even if the man isn't doing it or feeling it, if t- enough women are like, eh, there's a like a process they go through to really invite the man into his integrity around whatever he's nice. expressing. So I know that can happen to lots of men who are not necessarily thinking that's what they're up to. Mm-hmm. And then there are some men who are in that area who occasionally need to be asked to Reined go. In. Yeah, and so okay. it's 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 a tricky environment, right? So people are half dressed and they're sweating and there's loud music. Mm-hmm. And it's just a tricky environment. Let's just leave it at that. Okay. So your your so man's I'm, out there dancing. I'm and dancing into by women. myself because I in many t- many much of the time I actually like to do that because in this space of this kind of dance I'm dancing from the inside, so I'm allowing myself to just follow my impulses. Mm-hmm. It's pitch dark in the room. I mean, someone could see me if they wanted. It's not that dark. There are some kinds of lights on. But nobody's looking at me. No one cares. So for me, it's freedom to just dance by myself. I'm mm-hmm. not looking for a partner to dance with. But someone who's been doing it a long time and enjoys contact will then look for that. And there's certain ways that you ask. Like you literally have to kind of ask permission and it's like you can hold your hand up or you put your hands out as an invitation. But you don't, for the first time, you never dance with somebody without checking in Mm, in one way or another. So there's lots of boundaries. So I get that everybody doing it is super safe. Right. (laughs) It's the watchers. So, uh, and I really trust my guy. I really trust him. And he does things like come around and make sure he dances with me for a while. And how does that feel? I always feel much better. Mm -hmm. A little (laughs) check in. (laughs) Check in when he's dancing with me. And, you know, a couple of times people have said really sweet things like, you guys dance beautifully together. And that's very sweet. And the point is self-expression. And I want him to play full out. Like, I know there is nothing going on. And I cannot stop the voice in my head. And what's the voice saying? And well, she stops breathing immediately. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and honestly, what happened to me the last time was that I had to keep my eyes on him. I couldn't mm. let him fade into the distance. A few times before, it hasn't been that intense for me. So I got a little bit curious, like, hmm, why is what's this? What's changed? What's changed for me that last time I had to watch him? And actually, a couple times last time, he was with women I also trust that he was dancing with, like some people that I know. Mm-hmm. So it was even funnier that, that I that felt was going, vulnerable. That a little alarm bell yeah, was going off in your because head. Because I, I would absolutely know that there would be no way. And the alarms were going off. Does anybody out there ever had that experience? Have you, when you see something happening and you kind of mostly know mm-hmm. nothing's going on here, but your body is still, it's bringing up some bringing up my trauma. scarcity. It's yeah. bringing up my trauma. It's bringing up past experiences. It's bringing up all sorts of things. But because you've had two experiences where one, he was dancing the same way and you 
didn't get triggered or weren't feeling right. vulnerable and jealous. And then all of a sudden you have that same dance experience, but are experiencing it completely different yeah. with like, you know, the panic inside and the, <gasps> you know, needing to grasp him and have yeah. him check in like even more. And it's like, so it really has nothing. This is like a perfect example of it. it has yeah. nothing to do with what's going on in the outside. It really it's literally doesn't. your internal process. And, you know, maybe one week you're feeling really self assured about yourself and life is great. And then maybe another week you're feeling a little bit more, you know, vulnerable or not as worthy or something going on, whatever's happening in your own internal world that is allowing that his dance experience to affect you differently. Absolutely. That's exactly what was going on. And what I realized was one of the things that was going on um, was that, yeah, this is, this is what I <laughs> um, I've gained some weight. So I'm used to looking a certain way in my dance clothes and my, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't look like that right now in my dance clothes. I look Fuller bodied, luscious, luscious, Rubenesque, <laughs> whatever name we want to call it. And that piece gets in there and says, oh, and there are some hot babes out there. Oh, and okay, second one, age, right? Mm. So now I've got, I'm heavier than I used to be when I used to know I looked really hot in my little dance clothes. And now I'm older than I used to be when I used to look really hot. So things jiggle and wiggle in different <laughs> ways than I expect. From my experience, I was able to do that when I was 30 and really thin and really fit. I could still do that to myself. So I know it's something I do. Whether, like it's even not the weight necessarily because the story back when you were younger and thinner was kind of the same inside the same, of yourself. Yeah, same. I was never thin enough. I was never pretty enough. I was never enough of in any way. Right. In other ways. And this time it just – it's like wherever there's a judgment. And I, I, what I realized was that what came first was a lack of taking care of myself. How so? So what that looked like was spending too much time thinking about him, spending too much time like doing things that support our relationship without doing things that support me. I was get my tanks were getting super low. Mm. And as they got lower and lower, my jealousy factor was getting higher and higher. What also came in was my self-judgment of my weight, my self-judgment of my age. Now, okay, weight, we could argue I could do something about, which apparently right now doesn't appear to be true, but we could argue that. Age? You can't do I can, I'm, there's nothing I'm doing about that right now. I can, I can change some of the things about how I look about my aging or something, but I'm still – Right here at 59 and a half. <laughs> 60 is coming. Here comes the train. And maybe so, that has part of it too. That 60 is kind of looming there. Maybe, and we haven't really talked about that yet. Maybe, maybe that's another podcast. It's, but, you know, it's uh, maybe not the number. It's just what I see when I look in the mirror. That's just, you know, yeah. Going and you realize it's not, I mean, you're very aware it's not what other people see. No, 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 no. It's not one of the – so back to the root of all of this. So my self-judgment is the issue, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter what it looks like because once I start to lose my internal footing of who I am and what's valuable about me and that I value myself and love myself, once I start losing that footing, that's when any judgments can come in, and they come in fast. Yeah. So I can send a projected – um, positive projection out in the world, like, she's so beautiful. I am not beautiful. She's so hot. She, he must want to, you know, be sexual with her because I am this old lady, you know, kind of thing, right? Right. And the observable facts are there, but in the other time when I was there, I didn't notice it. So that's when I really started asking myself, why is this like sort of rise. I don't know. Any of our listeners have this feeling that starts to rise in your body that feels like you're going to have a panic attack. There's so much tension. You're like, how do I break this tension inside me? So yeah, when he comes dancing over for a moment, I feel better. I'm right. like, okay. But it's okay. since it's He's not here. about him when he leaves 
the it's area and then it comes again. back again. Yep. Now look, you know, he's off with another dancer, another woman, you know, and, and I can even start doing the like, well, he's getting kind of close to that guy too. You know? <laughs> like, maybe, maybe I'm not all he needs, you know, I can do it in any direction. And the common denominator is who I'm being with myself. But well, this, I, oh, go, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just saying what I recognized was the week before I had been spending, I spent a lot of time with him and kind of because we were in his world, mine, not anybody's fault, just kind of got slipped to the side. Actually, it's really my responsibility. Right. And I, I I let this happen. This has been a ongoing, be careful, ladies, of this one, is I just let my life slip. I let my friendship slip. I let my walking slip. I let my, my own meditation. I meditate with him, but it's a different mm-hmm. meditation. I, I let, did all of that with right? Golden Eyes. I just, do you guys like, ever do that out there? Gave all of my routines over to his routines. And I think in some way I like justified it in my head of like, oh, well, I'm learning new things or opening up right. to new information and ways of doing things, and which I did. And I gave up my a lot of my own practice. So I think there's two things in this. One, like how um, how do you go about filling your tank back up. Right. And two, I think there's something to discuss around when we're jealous and it's really about ourselves and when we're jealous because our uh, intuition, our intuition's kicking in that something's going on. No, I don't know. <laughs> Chris is taking off her clothes and my sweater I'm just came hot. off too. So it's like, the first thing with the easier thing would be how okay, do you fill up your tank? <laughs> how do you fill up your tank? Yeah. So it's just alluding to that, that, you know, I my self care tank was getting low, and I I realized I had been showering at his house, and I just didn't have everything. I, I right. had a nice amount of stuff, but I didn't have everything. And it's in his shower, and my towel is, you know. So have you shifted that? I have, and, and I can really feel the effects of it. And it wasn't just the shower; it's just a lot of little things that feel, add up to be big things. They add up. The big thing is that I'm way too vulnerable to and i i think oh that's interesting you just yeah, said that. way th- too vulnerable cuz isn't that where we we need to be in order to have this like holy union like complete vulnerability and yet scary. no i'm going to draw a line there <laughs> i'm going to draw a line there okay. I, because yes complete openness and willingness to be authentic like This kind of conversation where I say, this happened, this was my experience. But the place that I said no was the responsibility for my own life. The balance of me has to stay in balance. Like that's in many ways why relationships falter. Mm -hmm. And if you're wondering about your last relationship, just check in. Did you overgive? Did you give your life up? Did you stop? taking care of yourself? Were you waiting for his call so much that there was so much energy? I would say yes, 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 (laughs) yes, yes, yes. And I was miserable and sick to my stomach all the time and completely jealous and drove myself crazy. And speaking of weight, you lost like, oh, 30 pounds? Maybe not that much? Yeah. I mean, not necessarily from his part of the (laughs) relationship, but yeah, definitely a good 15. Yeah. So, so... I, I mean, in my experience, there was a long period of time where your stomach upset was affecting your eating. Yes. And that's what I meant to allude to. And so yes, that- if any ladies out there um, need a diet, I know just the man for yeah. you. <laughs> I, I had that same diet. What did I call it? The trauma 20 <laughs> yeah. after my divorce. I was like, oh, the trauma 20. So Christy, you've had the divorce and the other mm-hmm. person who is not meeting your needs and you're not meeting your own. And right. that's that's the kind of vulnerability that's not okay. Mm-hmm. And that destroys relationships. And I know because guess what we become, ladies? Ready, Krista? Needy. Needy. This is the place of neediness. If a man's ever said to you, oh, my God, like, do you have anything else to do besides, <laughs> like, think about me? Or, you know, I'm going to go away for three days and you're going to spend the whole three days waiting for me to come back. Right. They can feel that. We talk energy on this show. We mean it. There is an energetic that comes from us that goes to the people we're tied to. And they're, and you know this, right? How many women have had a guy in your life that was 
gave up his life to you kind of and was super needy. And and maybe it wasn't even a love partner. Maybe it was a dad or a brother or a friend that you just never felt like you could get free of their energy. That's what we're talking about. Or a guy at school that kind of followed you around or a man at work that just kind of always stops by your desk. There's nothing wrong. But you can but feel, you can feel the, it. either That's desperation. energy. Or, That's yeah. what we're doing too. So I'm like sending this energy across the room to my poor partner that's just trying to dance for a couple hours. and Which then if he does then come over to dance with you, he's doing it out of like almost like feeling sorry for you. Like if your energy to him is like if that energy thing, is there. then he comes over to kind of like pat you on the head and be like, it's okay, honey. And then he dances off. But it, that doesn't necessarily feel fulfilling either. It doesn't. And I appreciate the impulse in him that he doesn't do it that way. He'll come over and say, no, I, I know, know sometimes <laughs> this can be triggering for you. Uh-huh. So I'm just checking in or how are you? Like, yeah. So we're actually having an authentic conversation rather than he's coming over pretending like he can't, you know. Right. No, I was dying just being silly with, with it. it. No, no. But I, it's a big distinction. So I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. And that has happened to me before. I've had men who kind of take care of me who, when they suspect that I'm not okay, will come over and take care of me in a way that is almost dishonoring Mm -hmm. because it's almost like I can't take care of myself. And so back to me and back to you, when we're in these relationships, it's it's almost like, have have you guys ever had your feet come out from underneath you where you slipped on something and your Mm -hmm. feet are just kind of like spinning and you can't really catch it and either you fall or you don't, but you felt that slipping feeling? That's what it's like when we don't fill our tanks up. And my issue is I don't even see it coming. I don't even know I'm not filling up my tank. I'm I'm going to work. I'm getting the things done I say I'm going to do. Well, don't you think we? that's a great point that you're um, talking about is that we don't know it's coming. But if we're having those feelings, like we should just start exactly. automatically knowing if we're angry, if we're depressed, if we're sad, if we're needy, if we're, we're having all of those any of those lower nature emotions, it's because somehow we are not filling our tank or taking care of ourselves. Absolutely. And we've become, and when I say like vulnerable, I mean needy vulnerable rather than open. Open Open-hearted. Yeah. So vulnerable, open and authentic is, that's great. So vulnerable, open, authentic, definitely need it for partnership. partnership. Vulnerable because you're needy and you're not full and you're waiting for the other person to keep dumping. I mean, we've fulfill all done you. this. Fulfill mm-hmm. me. Fulfill me. And yeah, then jealousy is a big thing. Because like with um, – so going back to that point of like jealousy from – it's because my tank is low and then jealousy because my intuition is going off. So right. it's like I think that both were operating with golden eyes, meaning – I had probably, it probably started with the lower tank first, meaning like I wasn't taking care of myself because that allowed me to continue to be in the situation or in the relationship at all. Yeah. Then came all the jealousy afterward. And yeah, and the intuition is really hard to read when that's happening. And you can't tell if you feel like you're a little like you're going crazy. I'm sure some of you listening know what we're talking about. For me, when I get my tanks full and then I can still feel like there's something in the field, that's when I have to pay attention. And that, so here's an interesting thing. Think about this, Krista. It, when my tanks are filled and I don't have my walls up and my boundaries up and my like, you can't get in here kinds of things or I'm, I'm taking care of my, I have so much information in the field that mm-hmm. wants to come to me. I have so much guidance. I have so much intuition. I can feel the other way women the other women are interacting with me. I can feel the way the room is interacting with me. And we're not we're not like woo woo like really way out there people. We've just opened ourselves to experience what what is happening energetically in the space. And you can do this too. You just settle down, but you have to settle down to feel it, right? I so- think I actually thought though my jealousy meant I loved them more. Meaning like oh really that neediness and that jealousy that I felt was like mm. oh it's because I love them so much that I feel that way yeah it's because you it hate a, yourself <laughs> yeah it was like but I misidentified and I think we kind of touched on this similar topic when we were talking about how I 
defined love or how I learned to define love based on, right. you know, my parents or dad issues. And like that became like the separation and that and the missing abandonment. Yeah, the missing heart. him was the the love. And I think some of that was operating with Golden Eyes too, in that the the desperation and the longing and all of that was and the jealousy just was proof to myself of how much I love him and how much I know we're supposed to be together. Right. That was a big story that you had that, you know, that meant that you were soul right. partners and tied together and yes. all. Yes. And you know, the, ladies, this is a tricky spot. There's a lot of women who were looking for relationships and partnerships. This is such an important piece to really figure out. And this is the major difference between every relationship in my life until now and this one, is that I actually finally am taking it seriously that I need mental clarity and mental space to think. Mm-hmm. I need physical space to be alone in my home and do whatever I'm doing, or mm-hmm. if I live with a partner, still have some alone time somehow that way. Yeah. I need emotional space to be able to express and maybe be with girlfriends who we express differently with or with anybody who's listening, whoever it is that you actually really express fully with. I need spiritual space to do my own meditations, my own explorations. And I need time space. I need time. I just need to take some space. And but we all, I think a lot of us, though, get caught up in the, oh, if my partner needs that much space, then they must not love me or want to spend time with me. And then it like amps up the jealousy even more. At least I think that that's what was operating with um, Golden Eyes. Like the more he needed space, the more like, ah. And like, then the more he needed space. And right, the, I mean, exactly. I think we've all had this experience, one side or the other, and many of us both, right? It's so clear to me that the biggest, what would you say? What would we call it? Fight? <laughs> um, <laughs> biggest, and it was big. Um, like, tell us. I don't know. I don't know what to call it because it wasn't exactly a fight. It was almost like a disagreement. It was like a um, clash and so energy clash. Want, yeah, it just was like we couldn't get it together, and he was really frustrated, and I got really scared and sad and you know, got more needy, of course, you know, in my own way. And then I was like, okay, then leave, you know, kind of, (laughs) that's also very not helpful, ladies. Um, Yeah. So what I recognized was happening was that he didn't see it coming either. He didn't see that he had given away too much of his space to me. Mm. And I was actually still okay at that point. And he wasn't. Meaning and like he was trying to he was either be with you, space. he was trying to be with you to make you happy, but in, in the, he wasn't getting the space he needed. In the exactly. Time and I think, as most of us know, this gets really tricky because you are like madly in love with someone and you want to be with them and the sex is great and like, why would you give that up? And so- but some days you're tired. <laughs> well, some days you're tired, right? Especially if the sex is great. And so- I, my diagnosis <laughs> of the problem is that we got to a place where his need to have space was bigger than mine. And it was super hard to communicate without what he thought might hurt, hurt my you. feelings. Yeah. So instead, we created a bomb going off in our relationship for that to happen. But and it wasn't there a big awareness afterward or a big. Absolutely. But it took us. You know, it takes three days when the bomb goes off. If you can come into it sooner, Katie Hendricks always used to say, what would you do with, what could you do in the world if you took all the time you spent fighting and used it for creativity? Mm. Like, wow, what could you do? Amazing things could be done. But no, we're addicted to fighting. (laughs) But that's okay because we're human and we have egos and we falter and we But I don't want to be addicted to that. And and so, but what I'm seeing is like with, my and not that I'm in relationship with Nurture Man, but I'm just using him as kind of like a test just, case. For, <laughs> no, I didn't well, mean it, Nurture Man. We didn't mean it. Just mean that um, I'm using him as like a test case of like working out some of these um, emotions of like there isn't the drama with him. Yeah, and I notice that there's also no jealousy, and I now I'm kind of noticing that there's not as much. There's not passion, and I'm 
trying to not get into the headspace of thinking to myself, oh, if I have a nice, normal relationship that's kind and, you know, supportive, that it's going to be boring and not fulfill my needs sexually and passion and all that. And I'm having a hard time buying into it, honestly. Well, I think you have to be careful because um, I think it's tricky. I do think it's tricky. And, you know, in, you know, my <clears throat> four month relationship, <laughs> but it has been pretty intense and it's been deep and it's been daily. So it's not like uh, once a week daily right. or something. Right. But nonetheless, what I experience is passion. I experience joy. I experience, and honestly, that comes from being full enough that I'm super authentic. And so is he, and we care about it. Like, I, I've been in relationships with men where it feels more like a friendship, even though we're sleeping together. And it's mm -hmm. not a friends with benefits, it's actually a relationship, but it, it's starting to slip from that. And there's something that's missing for me. Like somehow intellectually, I'm not getting something or, or physically, I'm not getting something. Or in some ways, some piece is really letting me know that it's missing. And it's not a piece that I can fulfill. Like for me, polarity sexually is super important. So when that fell out in one of my relationships, the relationship just started. Uh, clarify what you mean by that. When what? So I mean, out. when a so the masculine and feminine energy doesn't need to be a man and a woman, and it doesn't have right. to express in any specific form. But when there's an energy of polarity where there's some sexual excitement gets uh, evoked. Mm -hmm. That, for me, when it's not there, that's a big part of relationship, right. big part for me. I am I happen to be someone who's very sexual, so my partner happens to be too. That works. You know, there's lots of passion in there. What I'm hearing for myself in that is I'm still probably a little bit traumatized from mm. Golden Eyes, meaning like there was so much passionate energy, yeah. at least – that I felt for him, and then it ended the way it ended. It just kind of disappeared off the planet. So there's this, like, not trusting myself mm. in that. And also then I definitely remember that having this partner now that is so trustworthy and so solid and then not trusting that either mm. to be – the love part. I don't know. So I can see myself needing to like weed through these feelings because I am not jealous of Nurture Man and anything he goes out in the world and does. And I don't know if that's because I just know that he's a stand-up guy or, we, or does that indicate that there's a lack of, you know, feeling on my part in that way. Yeah. I don't know because you're the only on one that exploration knows. Stage. You're exploring that, which is great. So ladies, definitely explore. Don't commit to things too quickly. Don't. And men. But Absolutely. And men. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, but but give yourself a chance to explore these things. And really, one of the things I know that happens with <laughs> Mr. Delicious mm -hmm. is that uh, there's a way in which he surprises me that I so appreciate. And I think staying in appreciation mm -hmm. of what he brings me is actually one of the most powerful things of relationship is not to take him for granted, but to keep reminding him and myself of what I appreciate about him. And I was single for a while, and I've had a whole variety of traumatic relationships that I've carried. So for me, having a relationship that's both loving mm -hmm. and sexually exciting and I said both, but now I'm going to add more than two um, for all you grammar hounds out there. Don't bust me. Um, and there's this deep river in it. And that's uh, – any one of those things can surprise me. And it's almost like a reminder to say it out loud and appreciate him. And right now, sitting here, I can feel how solid I feel and how loving I feel and how in myself I am. And about filling your tanks, like, let's talk about that for a second. What, how do you know your tanks are full? Because there's so many levels, right? We talk emotion, emotional, physical, mental, spiritual. You know because you're solid. Like, do you think the next time you go to this contact it's improv, dance, yeah. will you 
do you envision yourself having that same reaction or do you feel because I all of a sudden right now I feel a softening and a healing happening with mm-hmm. you in that I, do. I don't think you're going to have that experience anymore. I know and it, it I don't either right now as I feel it. So what will happen is if I let this go again, if I let well, I think I'm going on Sunday actually. Um, <laughs> but if Let's I test let this out. <laughs> so this week I've been home more. Mhm. And I think it's a healthy sign of mm-hmm. a new phase of our relationship. Some people can interpret that as a relationship on the way out. Right. No. Some people could yeah. that's not what's happening. It's so we're so in touch. And I've needed to tend to my life so that I can remind myself, oh, I'm a whole person with a son and a house and a family and, and a podcast partner. A podcast partner. <laughs> and just hundreds, a cat. You yeah. Know, like hundreds of things that are my responsibility. And even just standing in my own bathroom at my own mirror with my own everything around me is somehow safe. And it reminds me, oh, yeah, I'm a whole, whole person. person. I like that. And I only met this person four months ago, and I was still a whole person. So mm-hmm. whenever that gets wobbly, it's just a great indication to go in, to check out my space, to make sure I haven't given away my power. Well, I really want to honor and praise you in this moment for sharing this story with us and for allowing us to be a part of witnessing the healing that has happened Mm -hmm. in this. Because it takes a lot to say, ah, I was watching that happen, especially knowing that he's going to hear this episode. And I don't know if you've told him this experience you had at the Dance. dance thing or not so i don't think so <laughs> yeah and so and then it's like this like oh and needing to go to him and be like ah, eh, this is what, what my experience was and this is what i learned and it's allow all the conversation around it is allowing him to know you more right. it's more vulnerable and heart opening for you and for him allowing you guys to get even more close and intimate together and it allow for this healing to happen you know what I said to myself, Krista? This just, rem- I just, this just dropped in. So first of all, I just want to say that I can feel the healing dropping in in this mm-hmm. conversation. My energy was super high, and probably my voice was more towards the beginning, and now it's just softening and holding. And what I remember myself saying to myself after this experience was, "It's time to go home and take care of yourself." And I got scared. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh gosh, now what if he leaves?" And I'm like, "Better now." Then later, mm. if I don't treat myself the way I need to be treated, when we move into a house together, how will right. I ever take care of myself? Right. If I don't, if you can't hold the boundary when you're in two separate exactly places. How are you going to do it when you're in one space? And I do think that lots of us lose our way. We lose our our courage to stand up for what we need, and we lose even the idea that we need something. Mm-hmm. And so for our partners, interestingly enough, as somebody starts to come wobbling towards you, a good time to check in if they need some space, if they need some time to tend to themselves. Because really, there's only a few things we can give each other as partners. Mostly everything is coming from us. And that's been the lesson that I have learned over and over. I should say I've been trying to learn, and for a while it got louder because I actually wasn't learning it, and I still had a really good victim story going, and I still blamed pieces of my life on people who were behaving in ways that were hurtful to me, and I can't say they weren't, and I was creating the opening. By not caring for myself, I could see that people weren't caring for me, but that wasn't really the truth, and if I had started taking care of myself. If I have you ever had you would have a noticed it sooner. Absolutely, where you know where that turning point mm-hmm. was, the day you went I'm going to lay down here and just let this go cuz I'm I'm too scared. Right. Sometimes I'm too scared to be by myself in the world as women, we make that choice sometimes like, "Oh, better this guy than nobody." Mm. I am yeah. not making no, I'm that not choice. Doing that anymore. You feel your <laughs> and right, and But I do you, hear that story run through my head a lot. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a question sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. Is this guy good enough? Am I settling for him? All those questions. So ladies and gentlemen, this applies to men too. Isn't that great? So the higher, the what is it? The, the more attracted we are to someone, the more they have all the things on our list. This is going to be a bigger 
trigger for mm-hmm. us, I think. Because there's more, there's more to lose. More you know? to lose. I think that's we we start about. playing. The more we love someone, the bigger the loss could be. Right. But also, the more we love someone, the greater the gift it can be and the greater exactly. the love it can be. Exactly. And then when we settle down into really loving them and letting them be themselves and really loving ourselves, that's when you can finally tell if the relationship is actually something you want mm-hmm. or something you want to let go of. And so... Yay. Yay. Thank you for so, sharing uh, that. Yeah, you're welcome. So, uh, yeah. Check in with your jealousy. Check little in monster with yourself. in there and see, see what it's trying full. to tell you. Yeah. Are you full? <laughs> All, All right. right. Love you Thanks, guys. Everyone. Spread the love. Spread the love. Do you want the opportunity to see the gals of Holy Fuck in person? If so, go to holyfuckpodcast.com and join our mailing list so you can find out when and where these goddesses will be transforming lives next. And yes, I know, I'm talking about myself in third person. Open your browser, type in holyfuckpodcast.com, click on mailing list, and give us your most trusty email. Not that bogus one you give to Walmart. So sign up now. Not tomorrow. Now. Now, now, now. Thank you.